Hi, Kitty Cats. Today on the program, we have a very serious topic. We'd like to bring awareness to mental health in the LGBT community and in particular transgender people. Uh, we're going to discuss suicidal ideation, suicide attempts, and then start thinking about how we can improve the suicide rate in transgender people in particular. I'm sure you're curious how friends and family members can be supportive and help us out as we have some, uh, some difficulties. All this and so much more on this inaugural episode of Gender Identity Weekly for the week of September 7th, 2023. I am Amethyst Herrick. I am your hostess for the program. All of my work and the work of contributors is supported by subscribers to the Purple Pop Publications website, Gender Identity Today. So if you like this content, the website is linked in the show notes. Please go there and subscribe. If you are a subscriber, you will receive emails when I and, when I and when other con uh, contributors publish new content. You're also able to interact directly with me and other contributors through comments and depending upon the level that you have, you will, we can also get access to a private Discord server and private monthly events. All right, so I am joined here today, first of all, by Morgan Witten. Morgan, thank you so well, much for yeah, coming pleasure. and discussing this. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a dark topic, but um, to describe the motivation that we have around this, I, you know, I'm sure if, if if you're listening to this, if you've also read any of my content in maybe the last couple of weeks, I, I think it's been obvious that I've had some difficulty. You know, last week actually, I discussed in a video that I've been feeling depressed. And ultimately um, started having suicidal ideations. In fact, to go further, I actually started planning um, a suicide. Now, Morgan reached out to me. And thank you, first of all, Morgan, for reaching out to me because, you know, that was important. And I guess what you expressed to me is that you weren't feeling well either. You've, you've had um, some difficulty in the past couple of weeks or, mm -hmm. or longer. I guess I don't want to. It's maybe longer. Yeah, the depression comes and goes, you know. Um, it always and, and does. Sometimes, sometimes joined by like grief or, or anxiety or just other things, you know, it, it can pop up and and has little siblings of its own that it kind of brings. <laughs> right, right. And you kind of wish they wouldn't move into your house because you know there's other <laughs> things you're trying to do. But in talking with Morgan, one of the things that I recognized is. I tend to be very cerebral uh, about you know, whatever it is I do. Everything I do is very cerebral. And Morgan, thankfully, is very practical. And so I thought it would be it would be of value to have a conversation with you in particular, Morgan, because you know, I know that that you've you've created a lot of tools to help you. And and I'm willing to bet that if I'd had maybe some of these tools, maybe I wouldn't have gotten to where I did. So, dark topic, I, but this is an important one because Indeed. it deals with people. So, so let's, let's kick this off, Morgan, with, um, with statistics. Um, you've mentioned to me the facts are, are inconsistent, typically inconsistent. And they're very difficult to find. Mm -hmm. so In the total, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, in, in some of my research, um, it's hard to find facts on, like, the LGBTQ community. Um, you know, right. Trevor Project had a bunch of stuff, but it's for youth. And, and they do a really good job of summing up each year and, and putting out a report and what's mm -hmm. going on and, and where's the focus and what could be done. And that's available right off their website all the time. Um, but, yeah, like, finding a consistent, repeatable number for, like, different things has been a real challenge to try and find something. Yes. For the LGBT community. Right, uh, right. For, for the greater U.S. population, like, that's pretty easy. You know, you can just sort of yeah. send out something, you know, a census, really. Right, the um, CDC combines a bunch of that stuff. And yes, right, publishes. so the CDC. Yeah. So, so do you, you want to read these off or you want me to read them off? Huh? <laughs> well, why don't you take it, please? Oh, good, okay. So in the total U.S. <laughs> population... 
total U.S. population suicide statistics being delivered to you here by. So it turns out, and this, these are statistics from 20, 2021, I believe you said, right, mm -hmm. that I'm about to yeah. read here. So it turns out about 4% uh, of the U.S. population seriously considered seriously considered suicide. And this is where we get into um, suicidal ideation. Um, it turns out that that 0.5% actually attempted suicide and, uh, you know, it's a, a lower percentage, a, a significant lower, lower percentage um, succeeded. But when you work that out, uh, that actually turns out to be a one death by suicide on the order of every 11 minutes through the entire yeah. year of 2021. And things got I mean, worse. It's not surprising with the years we had, too, right? I mean, uh, well, with so much point. going on. Yeah, good <laughs> point. Um, and things got worse in 2022. Now, I, I mean, it increased by a significant proportion. I want to say, was you said it increased by 2.6% to, to get up to yeah. about 6.5% then? Um, yeah. Okay. And. and that was right off CDC's website. Um, yeah. And they, and so like it was, uh, the one other thing I wanted to point out with that was, um, it is one in every 11 minutes, but like that, that didn't include any LGBTQ data. So like, you know, sure. th there was no breakdown. They broke it down by gender sure. and all sorts of other stuff, but nothing that would, you know, kind of what we want to go into today. Which, Not which, at all. Again, makes it hard to find. <laughs> right. Because the statistics I'm more familiar with are, I mean, having, you know, being part of the, the transgender community as well as, mm -hmm. as, well as bisexual, um, I'm much more familiar with LGBTQ statistics. And, and the big ones that I always use, that I always use, the ones that I have used are from the Williams, Williams Institute at UCLA. Um, we ended up finding, Morgan and I together, we're looking at, at 42% of LGBTQ people seriously considered suicide, seriously consider suicide in their lives. Um, I am going to compare that w with the number we had for the U.S. population, 4% versus 42%. It was 10 times an order of magnitude more prevalent in our community than it is in the population at large. If you want to get worse... The Williams Institute uh, conducted the, the largest transgender study. study. Um, this goes back to 2015, unfortunately, so some of this data is a bit old, but they got as much as 82% of transgender people seriously considered suicide in their lifetimes. Mm -hmm. We are now looking at 20 times the, the U.S. rate of, of suicidal ideation just in the transgender community couple of things both Morgan and I want to make clear. These are self-identified people. Now, we don't know how many people are closeted when they've had these suicidal ideations, when they've, when they've attempted suicide. This is self-identified people who are, you know, essentially capable of being in this study because they had said, look, I've gone through all this work to get to a point where I can say I am transgender. And some of this data is very out of date because we just don't do these studies. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Morgan? Um, first of all, it's it's so heavy. Um, it's it, you know, having been there myself, of in some ways, it's it's hard when anybody thinks that the world would be better off without them, and yeah. and it makes me think of so many things that, that went wrong to lead up to that point. Right. And so why, why is this happening? Why is this such an, um, epidemic and it's getting worse, right? It's yeah. gone up. And so, and I, I think I want to point out the differences, a couple of things here. One is the, you know, we, you hear all these numbers flying around and I know a lot of people like to quote like that 42% number. And, and again, it's, if you look at one organization versus another, they'll get different numbers because they ask different people, right? And I think, but the point to consider here is um, the, the numbers basically boil down to you have those considering suicide, those actually making a plan, and then those attempting it, and then those who are unfortunately um, 
okay. you know, successful. completely act. Yeah. yeah. I hate to use the word successful, but I agree with you. Like, right. it's, um, and so like, I think, you know, in the U S uh, I think just looking at those numbers, like, um, it, think about this. If you could imagine what was it? 12.7 million people in the United States in 2021 thought right. about ending their life in a serious right. manner. Yes. That's, that's like larger than the state of any state but California practically. Coming close, yes. That's crazy. Yes, um, an entire fact, state, right? <laughs> how, how is that okay? And then and of those people, you have um, 1.7 million that actually may, you know, attempted it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and this is just the U.S. stats from the CDC, like, Right. But think about that. It's one point seven. That's still like many states yes. attempting each year. That's, I mean, what's wrong that would cause a whole state full of people, you know? And so like, and and there's so many different things at play there. And I think we could take some of it apart. Um, I think we're gonna, you know, some of it we can control and do a better job at. Some of it we have to figure out as a society and a larger. Um, you know, picture, but some things we can do for ourselves that are really powerful, right? Um, yes. Mental health is at an all-time high in this country, and I think that's probably one of the biggest problems. Um, and, and yeah, I just, um, it's just heavy. And then the actual number of deaths is much smaller, but it's still high. And, you know, yeah, anyways... I just right because the actual number for 2021, I don't know the exact, but it was about 46,000 people. Yeah, uh, 48,183 oh, died. Okay, 48,000. Um, so, w which is which is a sizable city, a sizable town, you know, yeah. a rural town, but a, a sizable town. That's that's entirely too many people. 50,000 people. Um. Now, I mean that's a horrible statistic. Absolutely, I'm I'm curious, you know why why, you know why is it our community has a greater? Because I mean when we look at the fifty thousand people that the CDC has reported, like our community's in that. I mean you mm -hmm. know that that is all statistics across total U.S. population, so we're in that. Um, you know, as far as percentages of, 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 you know, just LGB, you know, what that is in the U.S. population versus transgender, you know, there are a lot of estimates, none of which seem remarkably accurate, but, you know, I've seen as, I've seen as much as, you know, 10 to 20 percent, um, self-identify in one of those categories, probably not in public, but, um, 15 to 20 percent. I mean, if you know, that could be anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 of those deaths or our community um, when it's a, when it's a relatively small, you know, sector of the population. So, I mean, what what uh, why do you think we have this disparity? I mean, wh why are we looking at a much higher percent of percentage of our population versus the rest of the rest of uh the the US. Well, I think I think everybody struggles with identity problems on some level. Um, Certainly. I think from a socially acceptable viewpoint, um I think the LGBT community struggles with acceptance across the board. Um you know, problems yes. from like um who am I? There's a lot of personal reasons we may not be able to be okay with that, like from, you know, personal convictions around um, who you are, um, yep. whether it's acceptable in your religion or your or your household. I mean, think sure. about it. Like, I think there was a statistic I saw, and I'd have to refine this, uh, but something like sixty-two percent of all households. In fact, I have it up here for Trevor Project. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. Um, there's some crazy. Uh, Statistics. Uh, basically, the one of the biggest problems, though, is not being not having the proper support or encouragement mm -hmm. at home. Um, sure. And, sure. And that weighs so heavily. 
Uh, 56% of LGBT young people uh, reported that mental health care, were not, they were not able to get proper mental health care. Oh, gosh. Um, that's right off Trevor Web, uh, Trevor's yeah. Project's website. Yeah. Um, it's hard to find, again, results like this, especially for adults. Certainly. But I think um, from my own struggles and stuff, I think it takes a lot to look at yourself and realize that maybe there's certain things about yourself and go through the process of self-acceptance. I think yeah. there's a lot of people that don't struggle with certain aspects of self-acceptance like the LGBTQ community, but it's still a, it's still a journey for, I think, everybody in some process Like because there's things that people don't like about themselves all the right. time, right? Right. And, right. Um, and I think if you look at... I know when I had the worst cases in my life, um, it was when I was really struggling with self-acceptance the most. Sure. Um, even though... And sometimes when I'm really positive about myself, I can still have the depression and anxiety kick up a notch. In fact, I even called mine Carl. It's kind of like fog. It rolls in and blocks out the sun. Um, sure. It's like the, the, the fog in San Francisco was called Carl. But anyways, like, um, it, it sometimes just rolls in without reason. And I've had people tell me, well, listen to your subconscious and what is it trying to tell you? I've had people tell me, like... Uh, Use the time to just take care of yourself. Like, it, you know, I think this is probably one of the most common things is people just kind of write it through. I think you had mentioned something like that when, when your depression kicks in, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I mean, though, like when it rolls in, though, I mean, I got to figure that there's like I got to figure there's a reason. I mean, I know I know this mm -hmm. last time. Like I had a reason. I mean, you know, I, and I can pinpoint that. I mean, to 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 one interaction, actually. But I mean, if I can dump on society for a moment here, because <laughs> you know it's easy to do. Um, you know, you can look at negativity. I mean, across many, you know, many many mediums, uh, media, I guess, Twitter. Believe it or not, doesn't seem very positive toward our community. What? Um, there are websites that that track. Yeah, I'm willing to bet I'm on a website by now that you know to, that, that tracks our comings and goings. We have laws introduced on a daily basis, you know, to to regulate, um, to legislate. I guess uh, you know our, us trying to develop an identity, and then there's just the general discrimination. You know, as you mm -hmm. you go go about your daily business. Um, you had actually brought up, um, I, I had a, I had a, a reel on Instagram that went, and I actually talked about this in a, in another, another, uh, video, but I, it, I wouldn't call it viral cause I think viral is probably pretty big. So I was calling it fungal, you know, <laughs> came up like mushrooms, although not quite, you know, billions of views, but I had one that, that harbored, you know, f I used 40 or 50 negative comments. And, and mean ones. Some of them mean, very mean, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I left them all on there because, you know, I mean, first of all, I don't want like a full-time job cleaning up somebody else's hate. That's not necessary. That's called guaranteed employment right there. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? But I couldn't get paid for it. That's the only thing. If I could uh. get paid for cleaning up hate comments, it would be a 24-7 job. But I think these end up coming about. So I don't know. I had 50 on this Instagram reel. But I think most of it comes about because of not just misinformation, but even disinformation. That we know better and we report differently about the experience of being any kind of, any kind of uh, you know, color of the rainbow. So that's external, right? I mean, that, that's, that's just, ex, you know, the, the society's response to us i mean you started bringing up religion uh, or religious organizations but we have to care about that too right i mean we have that has to be internalized we have to think that that's right whether it's internalized transphobia homophobia right i mean you know like how how much do you you know there's a brain tendency to want to make sense of everything and and there's this effect, and I don't remember what it's called, but like, even if you know it's wrong, your brain, in an effort to keep consistency, um, yes. it, it will persist a lie, basically, 
um, sometimes to, to keep, you know, you function being able to make sense of your reality. Yeah. Um, and it takes real effort to overcome, you know, limiting, self-limiting beliefs and stuff like that, right? Yep. Um, especially yeah. if you've practiced it a lot. So like, oh, there's no way I can do that thing. I mean, and, you know, and how often in our depression, for instance, do those negative self-talk that we've practiced come to the surface? You right. know, how many people right. have said somehow, like, you're a total worthless piece of crap? Like, it's, it's, I mean, we don't really make it our own until we tell it ourselves. And it, it yeah. can affect us a lot, you know, negative comments. But the real weight is when we start repeating it ourselves. And right. I think, um, you know, one of the problems is we're, um, how many people don't get therapy? How many people don't talk to someone or have a good support network? You know, how many people in an effort to like, you know, explain away something that they're not good at or feel bad about, they make up a story like they're limiting in some way or they're bad or they're, sure. they're not sure. worthwhile. And I think that really perpetuates a lot of this and it just builds up. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's, I, it's a, it's a damage to our sorry. culture right now. Yes. So, you know, right. Well, I mean, and I, I would say, you know, we have the tendency not to have, at least in our community, we have few like good role models, you know, mm -hmm. most of the representation, I mean, in, in, and I'm not even talking just transgender. I mean, you know, for the longest time, the only representation I knew about, I knew um, for gay people was like Will and Grace. It's not even mm. the greatest representation. I don't yeah. know that it's significantly better, you know, 20 years later. But, um, you know, role model role models and being able to see somebody who who attains, you know, success and sustains, you know, so is, is able to 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 get to the point where, where, you know, uh, they've self-realized, I hate using that, but you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, um, now I, now I can't think of the pyramid. What was the triangle? The, the, I, that always comes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The, there you go. Maslow. But, thank you. The Ma <laughs> Maslow. Yeah. So I mean, self-realization in the Maslow sort of way. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's really hard just to find people, to, to, to pattern after, let alone find, you know, achieve, uh, creating goals that are going to be attainable and things that you totally. can keep, that you can keep running, you know, sustainable is sustainable is another thing. You know, like, I think that kind of speaks to itself of having a good vision for how to live your life. Oh, and sure. there's a lot of aspects. I mean, you know, the number one growing aspect thing out of the bookstore is the self-help section. Oh, I would like, imagine. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's where more, more money is being spent spread and you know i just went to a coaching seminar with uh with tony uh well virtually but like um and it's like it's the number one growing section that all these coaching and sure. stuff is growing to oh, is sure. like self-help yeah. but if you're supposed to be the expert who do you turn to for like like you're saying that good representative especially if the lgbt community it's it's hard to find someone that's not you know, or that their purpose isn't like entertainment or something, right? Right. And so, right. Um, even though entertainers can be a great role model, I think, I think people that are actually doing something, um, you know, uh, the transgender senator we just have, you know, that's running for Congress, like mm -hmm. that's amazing. Like I love seeing representation like that. And sure, uh, sure. I, I, I got to look up her name, but um, you know, I, I think. If they are, there are a few out there, but I think the more the most power can come when you have someone that you can get to know, and then eventually find it in yourself. Right. Because I I truly right. believe that if if we have enough support, we can find the answer in ourselves. You know, we right. can be our own right. best model, but we have to have an image for what that looks like, and we have to continue to work on the things that limit us and and tear us down. Right. Right. You brought up a great point, actually, that I think. Because I was going to mention, well, you said, you know, we have to pull this out of ourselves. And I, I mm -hmm. totally and completely agree. Um, because I think there are, there are many times and places where you can't, even if you don't have internalized shame, even if you do not have internalized transphobia, homophobia, um, that lack of support in family and friends, uh, I, I mean, I could, it could like turn it, I mean could be dangerous i guess is what i'm saying right. you know sometimes coming out 
you know, means being harmed, actual physical harm. You don't even have to harm yourself. Right. And so that fear, I mean, fear is a very powerful motivator and depressor, I guess, is where I'm going to go. You know, mm-hmm. um, there, there was a there was a story. I don't know if you've ever read any Victor Frankl. Yeah. Um, OK, Man's Search for so Meaning. That's the one. Yeah. So, you know, he he has the the story about, you know, how in a concentration camp, you know, there were people forced to I mean, the, their their job, their job became picking up a rock and moving it, you know, to the other side of the yard. And they were then when they were done, you know, the people watching over them. So we'll pick them back up and move them back over there. And after two or three times, people just started wasting away because they saw no purpose. They saw no right. no value within themselves mm-hmm. because they're, they weren't in an environment where, I mean, they, they even could come close to, to finding a purpose, I guess, as it were, you know, search for meaning. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there that get into an environment in their family that that's pretty much it. It's like, okay, look, your role, pick up that rock, move it over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Wait, what, what if that's actually my job today? What does that say? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, that's true. Sorry. I should have asked earlier. Are you a rock mover? <laughs> or should I? <laughs> Figuratively? Yes. But that's beside the point. <laughs> of course, of course. So, you know, as far as as far as being able to to you know, ultimately to to self realize, um, I mean, I think we've come up with a lot of good reasons against. Go ahead, Jack. You, you, you are you're going. With, I mean, I, let, oh, please finish your thought. What? I'm just, you know, so we can sit here and for the rest of, you know, we, we've been recording about, you know, 20, 25 minutes. We could go on for probably the rest of the evening and just go, <laughs> God, can you believe it? Yeah. And then that happened, too. And that happened, too. So you you brought up the point. We have to draw this out of ourselves. I, you said it better than that. I, I, I wish I, I wish I remembered it. But um, do you remember how you put that, that I could? Uh... I think we have I think. All the answers for what we are struggling with lie inside ourselves. There you go. But we need the right things to bring them out. And so we need a safe environment. So I was going to say, and I think I see where you're going. And yes, let's talk about things that are constructive. Yeah, for sure. Because I think that would be more meaningful at this point. Yes. Um, So I think one of the things I would say that's probably the most important thing you can do is, you know, first be open-minded. Um, oh, we don't be closed minded about where you could go. So the more you could practice things without judgment of yourself, you will learn so much more about yourself. If, you, if you're yeah. pre-colored um, to a, a certain opinion or outcome, I think you will severely limit yourself on what you can do with your life. You know, I really need, think I need to be a bricklayer. I really think I need to do this thing. Well, what if you're, what if in your heart of hearts you, you want to compose music? What if you want to be a dancer? What if you want to be a congressman and, and you know, or whatever? I think right. by truly being open to, the, to whatever, you know, I did that and I, felt I had my oh shit moment a little bit later. Um, my life was changing. And I'm like, you know, I'm finally going to give myself a chance to get to know myself. And a week later, I had my oh shit moment and found out I was trans. Sure. So like, <laughs> it's amazing what you can find out about yourself when you just give yourself a minute. Some, some things will be great. Some things will be bad. Um, my life has never been the same, but it's been a lot better. And, and sure. the more you get to know yourself, the more self-acceptance you can finally c- come to bear, the easier it becomes to deal with hard things and hard things from other people. So like yeah. one of the first things you sh- I think you could do is, is to be loving and accepting towards yourself and whatever that means. You know, Learn about yourself. Become the authoritative source on who you are. And don't be afraid to try, try things. Um, I think from there, having a good support network, having, you know, mental health is at an all-time high, um, poor mental health. And so I think having a good therapist uh, for some people is a really positive thing. You know, like sure, sure. putting some good people in place to why you walk this journey to help advise you and, and maybe try things or 
you know, give you that feedback or whatever it is, I think, or that you could just confide in because it doesn't always have to be like a paid professional, but, um, right, you know, a right. lot of pe people don't have good support at home. So find a friend, find, yeah. find a mentor. Um, and there's a lot of organizations out there that do that. Um, I, you know, to, let me, I want to, I want to yeah. follow up on something you said too, because you mentioned having an open mind and this was a few years ago. I was, um, I was, I was reading various things. It doesn't make a difference what, but there was a reference to, there was a reference to another book. And so I went to the other, I looked it up on, on Amazon and I looked at the, the Amazon author page, you know, and, and the first thing I did was, was go, Oh gosh, this, this dude's an Irish Catholic priest. And I didn't buy the book. I mean, I ended up not buying the book. It may have been great for me. I don't even know. It may have been perfect, exactly what I wanted to know. But I closed my mind to that because I went, well, this person is not going to be able to 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 impart knowledge because because who he is runs counter to who I am. And I don't know that. I mean, I believed that, mm -hmm. but. But, I, the, you know, when you bring up self-limiting, you know, like that's a big one. Why, you know, we, we definitely want to, to close out avenues. And by the way, everybody out there, you know, I'm not turning Irish Catholic. Okay, that wasn't my, <laughs> it was, wasn't my point. But my point was I didn't because I thought, well, this guy's not going to be able to, to help me. You know, there, there was nothing he had to offer. And I don't think that's true. You know, there's... Um, there's another book ultimately that I read by the guy who recommended this Irish Catholic priest, um, who wrote a book. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called. I think it was find wisdom, wisdom everywhere, seeking wisdom everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. one of the two, uh, Philip Cargom is the guy's name. And, uh, anyway, his point is, you know, you can generally find help in almost everything if if you know how to pull it out, if you, if you know yourself, as you, as you've mentioned, you know, you can find the nuggets of wisdom in just about anything, Yeah. you know, and, and discard you know, the rest of it. So I, I want to just comment really quickly on that. You yeah. know, um, uh, there was a book I was reading. It was from a transgender, um, trans man. Uh, I don't want I don't know if it was a priest or, a but anyways, uh, Christian denomination, and it was talking about you know reckoning of Christianity and uh, them being transgender and how they sure. could do that, and yeah. it was like a it was like a priest or some sort of religious leader that that instead of like turning on them and saying like you know what you are is bad, they gave them the they literally gave them the advice be flexible, learn, mm. invest in knowing yourself, and that was the advice that this religious leader gave them that kind of helped them totally transform and be able to accept themselves. Sure. And in my own, you know, probably my greatest, uh, one of my greatest struggles with accepting myself was for my own previous religious convictions. Sure, and, sure. And thinking that, like, I'm not loved by my God or I'm not, uh, and going through that struggle to the point where, like, um, you know, it actually helped me to even be able to, by asking those questions and almost breaking, but coming back, um, I had, you know, it was my greatest, one of my greatest struggles, but it was also one of my greatest abilities to speak into my life and, and help a few other people. Sure. Um, that like, uh, it explained away some of the shame and guilt that I was holding on to for so long, yeah. right? It gave me a new narrative to explain these old things that I, I was not letting go of. And right. so, like, I think one of the things that so wears us down is the things we drag around with us. And so one of the best things you can do is by being flexible and open and learning about yourself is also be willing to change some of the limiting beliefs that you have and let right. go of some of the old things we've been holding on to. Right. And it's a process, right. you know? Right. Um, and, yeah, I, I think you're, like, also saying, like, you can find help in almost anything if you're willing to ask the right questions and keep digging. I, yes. I think that's so valuable because, you know, I, I truly believe that we all have something to learn and teach from other people. Like, yes, 
or two other people. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard. It requires a lot of digging. <laughs> right. Sometimes you got to go pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> I, they don't make a shovel that big. I'm going to not invest here, but. <laughs> but there know. might be something. So. Mm-hmm. so, you know, though, if you regarding self-limiting beliefs, because because when, you know, when we talked about the Instagram reel I had earlier and even before we, we started recording, um, you know, I mentioned to you I was capable when those came in. I mean, I read every one because I wanted to scroll through because I'm hoping I'd find one positive one at least. Right. You know, so I can give the little heart on it. What was interesting, though, is that those didn't touch me. And I like I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I mean, I'd like to think that I was, you know, uh, how's that Sia song go? Is You know, I'm titanium, but I don't think that was the case because uh, you asked me earlier you know it was did i did i go down a, a dark hole because of instagram and i, I don't I, I didn't you know strangely i did not um but i don't think i don't think that's true of everybody you know it doesn't mm-hmm. take a lot of scrolling around on instagram or or twitter or whatever or the news or yeah dear God. right i can go to msn you know supposedly relatively uh, uh, unbiased bbc um i might recommend going against fox news if you're in the uh if you're in this community i just 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 a thought but i mean there's the possibility because you can just stop engaging in these, right? I mean, I even just said, right, don't go to Fox mm-hmm. News, but but may, maybe there is something there. I mean, I I think there's a there's a good point. And you even you wrote this you wrote this recently that when when you put yourself out there, like the more that you put yourself out there, the more you have to accept your own vulnerability because you're going to get a mm-hmm. big target on your back. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I think it's a good question to go, well, if you're just going to stop going to Twitter, if you're going to stop going to whatever, Fox News, I don't care, you know, is that just sticking our hands, sticking our, sticking our hands, our head sticking the, our head. Our head yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, pull- yeah. I mean, are we, <laughs> are, are we actually harming ourselves? Should we, should we feel this pain? So, you know what? One of the greatest things that um, Brene Brown wrote basically yeah. says she's a, a famous shame researcher. Her yeah. One of her videos on shame is like the top 10 TED Talk of all time. Right. right. Um, she's so great. But basically, she kind of said one of the things is you can't love others and not love yourself. Mm. Right? And I, I'm doing a horrible job of paraphrasing her. But basically, you have to be able to love yourself in order to love others. And likewise, sure. in order to accept their love, you have to kind of love yourself. So either way, you have to invest time to get to know and love and accept yourself. And what does that look like? Um, that means being able to tell yourself the truth, to grow, and to know when to not accept the opinions of others, to put up some sort of front that stops the input that's going to inevitably get to you about sure. whatever. People have sure. opinions. That's great. They should. Um, but there's certain things we could do to like filter that, that intake of crap that comes from other people. Right. And it's not all crap. Like sometimes they just mean well, but you know, it's like a little kid that's has no filter. Oh, you're fat or whatever. Like sure. they don't know what they're doing is even bad. Um, I think technology can really help to filter. Some, like I use a, a, a web tool called Shingami eyes. Okay. Um, it's free. It plugs right into the browser. I think it'd be cool. Like, there's a bunch of technology and stuff that can filter out websites and stuff. Or um, you could use platforms that auto, you know, scan stuff. There's sure. there's different things we can do. Um, it'd be kind of cool someday if we could like compile like a list of resources or something. But oh like, my gosh, I know. <laughs> Draw um, up a list. <laughs> oh, are we talking about future things already? Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but but before you know, before we talk more about tools, because I wanted, I, I almost heard like two different. I feel like I heard two different answers. That hmm. that and and I'm I'm. This is my own. You know, let me just say it. I guess rather, but 
because it sounded like you were saying, yes, we should be fighting the good fight. Uh, we should be hurt. We should be hearing this. And at the same time, you know, we, we, we using tools is not a bad thing, you know, and this is not it, an indictment, Morgan. I'm, just, you know, no, no, no. But, I think because I, so... I, mean, I have an opinion on this, but, you know. You're also really good at seeing patterns and stuff, and I think one of the things I appreciate about your writing is you 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 do very good like analysis and draw out how one thing relates to the next. And that's why I, want, I love reading some of your content. Well, thank um, you. And you also remind me of a lot of things that sometimes I follow the shiny object, and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about tools, and I'm going to wander down that side road. But I think what I was bringing back to Brene Brown and loving yourself before you can love others, or it's necessary at least as part of it, is we have to do the work to know and love ourselves. And, and okay. You know, and then like yeah. in order to be strong you have to, and here's the thing, people usually see like vulnerability as something weak. But it's yeah. an essential part uh, that and authenticity being really like knowing ourselves means we have to be vulnerable to the possibility there's going to be both things we like and don't like right, that we're going to right. take some step out of our comfort zone and really see what that is. Like maybe talk to people, um, try things that, that really test those waters. You, you know, um, you can't have good without the bad. And right, I think right. this, this whole vulnerability is not weakness. It's strength in the end by, by being vulnerable, you also allow true intimacy and connection to happen with certain people. Right, 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 right. right. And, but you have to have it with yourself, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was kind of the point. Like, in order to not let the negativity impact us, we have to be vulnerable with ourselves first. And, and that means, like, being uncomfortable, I think, sometimes. Yes, um, yes. Well, I don't know. I, I, th I think... Well, yeah, yeah, tell me what you I, think. I, was, I mean, I agree with you. I mean... There was a book I read recently, and I'm trying to remember it. Now I'm blanking on that guy's name. But uh, his whole point, much of his, um, much of the, the advice that he gave is you, you're you not going to avoid pain in your life. Right. You know, and, and you need to, you need to, to learn to feel it, experience it, and then go, okay, I'm done with that. It doesn't serve mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah. I had that in some article somewhere, and I'm forgetting what it was. But, but it was, um, you know, I thought that was really good advice because so often we go, well, how do we how do we deal with the pain? Can I have an aspirin? Do you have oxycontin? What do I have to do not to feel pain? When when this guy's message is, you don't want to not feel pain. Wow, I just split an infinitive. You don't <laughs> want to to avoid pain. You want to feel it so that you go, oh shit, that's painful. And, yeah. and you can figure out what to do with it. Um, I don't know that that's revolutionary. I think Brene Brown is saying something similar. And uh, yeah, you I don't. Know, I don't I, you, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, I have. I, I so mindfulness is a kind of a. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a word that's thrown around a lot, but it means just right. being visual, like like being in the moment and seeing what's going on. And I used, um, when I was having a really hard time a few years ago and even recently, um, you know, I was working with this, uh, psychologist and she's like, you know, I could give you drugs, but instead I think I want you to try meditation. And I thought this sure, was a little, a little sure. woo woo, but she's like, give it a shot. Listen to this. Um, but in fact, you know what? <laughs> I just cleaned it out of my desk the other day. I had this thing go. called mindfulness and it was, um, there's a lot of different authors and people that speak to this stuff, but like finding something that where you can be present, like focusing on the breathing is often a way of doing this. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but the, to speak to what you're doing is like, you're observing the feeling and, and so to, in order to be able to process it and then let it go. Because right. how, what happens when we hold onto it? It starts to eat at us. It tears us down. We be, that becomes our truth. Whereas really feelings are important. They're a way of letting us know what our subconscious is, it's feel, like feeling, but they're For not sure. meant to be held onto. Like they're they're, tempo, they're temporary, right? Um, and and a lot of my pains from the past was holding onto old feelings of like, right, right this person let me down, or uh, you know, this this uh, important person in my life didn't meet a certain need that I had, yeah. especially like you know, growing up. 
And it just tore at me and it prevented me from like believing in myself. Like I would have uh, feelings like I wasn't worthy of, of love and respect because, you know, I didn't get these needs met as a kid. And, and really I was stuck at kind of like that young age emotionally in a lot of ways because I was still feeling that pain and it would stay there. And I had to do a lot of work to like, um, and mindfulness was really one of the ways that helped me do that a lot. But I absolutely what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. My mindfulness, I think was, was more or less what this guy was, was teaching. It was that, I mean, it was more, more Indian philosophy, you know, stuff, stuff upon which mindfulness was, was, was based, mm -hmm. but yeah, the, the ability, the ability to see something for what it is, is, uh, you know, it's difficult. Um, I think we've been talking about 40, a little more than 40 minutes. You, you have shown me a couple of tools and you know, you don't have to share screens <laughs> or anything, but do, do you want to discuss, um, you know, a couple of the tools that you've had that, that you have, um, that you use? Cause you know, like I said, I, I tend to be very cerebral and, uh, you, you know, you've been very practical and, and I'm, you know, I'm curious if maybe some of these, uh, you could share that people could look at and go, Oh, I'll use that. Sure. I think, um, there's a lot of things out there and, but none of them ever seem to work really well for me. So sure. let's, let's back up. I, um, I had a problem. So my tool of choice for a long time was, was mindfulness meditation. And I really got okay. into it and I liked it. I wasn't like, you know, sitting and chanting or anything, but I was finding it a quiet place and I would just be alone with my breathing and whatever, like I learned to coach my brain into a place where I could bring out emotion. Sure. And it was really helpful for like letting go of stuff. And that was the problem for a long time as I was holding onto emotion. And when I got to a point where like, um, I thought I was okay, I stopped doing it. Um, it's kind of like exercise. You kind of want to keep doing it, you yes. know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you, you, oh, I don't, you don't like healthy now. I right. eat healthy for a while. Right. Um, you don't. You don't reach enlightenment and just go. Okay. Well, I'm done. <laughs> How much time um, do I have left? Oh, fifty uh, years. Oh, well, okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll do it once a year. It's good. No. Yeah. Um, don't work. So that was a. It. It was and is a really powerful tool. And so that's yeah. something like I think getting in touch with yourself. And learning how to, it's not just to get in touch with yourself, but like actually to let go of all the shit so I could get to the next stuff. Because sure. if you're just oh, sitting sure. there and you're anxious and you're depressed all the time um, and you're not ever making it better, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to talk about. You know, some of the best things you could do for depression is get outside in the sun if you can, go walk, exercise, get your body moving, be mm -hmm. around people that are positive and uplifting. Like those are the best things you could do, like bar none, right? Um, we don't have a magical pill. Yeah. Can I ahead. throw actually, can I throw something out at you? Cause a lot yeah. of times, um, and I'm not criticizing what you're saying. Cause I agree with you. Um, I actually had this conversation with somebody else. I want to say pretty recently where, where people will, people have told me that we're like, Oh, just go outside. You like being in the sun, go outside. But depression, <laughs> you know, or this is, you, you feel bad. Just do the things that make you happy. And it's like, no, I'm not sure if you understand what depression is because the things that made me happy, now they don't. You know, like, that's depression. You know, are you misunderstanding what, what, what it is I'm feeling? Um, so you just want to, cha I mean, challenge that one just for one second because I agree with you. And then at the same time, I go, God, I really feel like hell. There's no way I'm going to go outside. Like I use that almost as like a punishment. You know, I go, I'm already <laughs> feeling bad. Well, hang on. Wait until I get to the end of it. So you're going to go, wow, you really are screwed up. I had no idea. I thought you were screwed up before, but damn. Um, because I'll get to the, like, I'll, I'll feel really bad. And then I'll go, you know what? I should go outside or I should go, I should do the things that make me happy. And then I think, no, I'm not going to do those things because what it does is prove to me that I'm bad and that I should feel like this. You know, it's a sense of punishment to, to force myself, you know, to, to continue to feel bad. Um, anyway, I'm just throwing that out there because I, I always love to throw monkey wrenches, apparently. No. But, this is well, great. This is, this is the type of discourse that, that makes better things, right? It's <laughs> right, like multiple viewpoints talking about an issue 
And then yeah. we all learn something, right? Or at least in theory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in theory. In theory, yes. So, so but, what do you? But what do you think on that? I mean, because you make great points. Do the things that are going to make you feel better. Right. And I don't and, because it's because <clears throat> it because it proves I'm bad. So. No. So I think one of the first things we have to do is we have to stop saying bad, good, and and the reason for that is you're already judging yourself. For sure. If you think about it. Oh, and, for sure. And sure, there's there's things that work better than others, and. and um, there's a time and place for most things um, at some point. Let me let me back up though. And, and you had asked me like what works for me. Yes. And I think it's good. What works is so dependent upon the person, the settings, and what's going on. Like great it's point. contextual, right? Yes. Great um, point. And so like obviously, fuck exercise and fuck whatever. If if I'm if I'm already in the throes of shit. I don't want to go fucking outside and walk with nature. It could go screw itself. Sorry. Yeah, have to really. Edit that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to keep but, those in, actually. That's going to be the <laughs> best part of the discussion. Uh, so, you know, I read this book. Um, it's called Lincoln's Melancholy. And um, okay. uh, I don't even have it here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm and, leaning my head over like it's going to help, you know. Yeah, you're not going to see it. If you can find anything on my shelf, you're doing really well. I know, but, um, you know. <laughs> so, and, and it, like, you know, he he really struggled with um, depression and and yes. stuff. And, like, his, yeah, his story is well documented. It's really interesting. I totally recommend the book. Um, and, and what I was looking for in that book and then at the time was, am I the only one that's feeling this shit? Like, sure. Like, am I alone? Sure. Right. And in, in my depression, I certainly feel super alone. I feel oh, yeah. isolated. I, I further like isolate myself and close off from the world. I leave where I'm well loved and supported. So like the exercise and diet like do affect your depression. They've shown it. Sunlight, activity levels, they all impact depression levels, right? Very much. And on yeah. a consistent basis. But long term especially. And so from a, almost like a maintenance standpoint and good practices, you have to be doing those things already. You're still mm-hmm. going to get hit with depression. You're still going to have to deal with, you know, sometimes when overwhelming situational shit happens where we have families, like that's a chaotic mess. We are human, but we're also <laughs> beautiful in that chaos. And what I, what I like to do is step back. So, um, if, if I could, if my friend came to me and said, I'm in the middle of depression right now, or I'm suffering from depression, what can I do? What would I suggest? Yeah. And um, there's a couple things I've made. So the first of all, I made like this depression checklist kind of thing. It was like a simple one pager that I could put up on the wall and I could see it. And I knew it intrinsically. But one of the things that happens in my depression is I lie to myself. Remember mm-hmm. that whole, like our yes. brain likes consistency? In my depression, I'll start saying like, oh, I'm not doing anything with my life. I have no purpose. I have no reason for doing it. I made the wrong choice or or whatever. And I start to persist lies that support how I'm feeling rather than taking how I'm feeling as some information and further asking questions to drill down. I start to go down that negative bypass. And so I can't trust my inner dialogue sometimes when that's happening. So what can I do to remove it and keep things like, you know, and it's important that like, you still have to like feed yourself. You still have to go to the bathroom and there's certain practices that like, um, that are like self care that don't add a whole lot of extra stuff that take like the minimal amount of energy just to get through the day. And so what I did is I created a sheet that talks to that. Like it very briefly says like questions to ask myself. And I have like four questions is this like signs of depression or anxiety? Um, how bad is it? And I trust myself enough to, to say those things. And like, depending on how bad it is, can I call someone? If so, sure. do I need to call this person? And like, it is, that's the top little portion of the page. And then next to it is like, I have like a section that's like basic self care for the day. And it will say things like, um, you know, what do I absolutely have to do? I have to feed myself to go to the bathroom, maybe take a shower, you know, um, make sure I do some basic things like brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Um, and I list it out 
And then I have a few other things like, what are some things I can do to combat this right now? And, and then what's some facts about myself that I know I'm probably going to lie to myself and go into the negative self-limiting beliefs? Of course, yes. Um, and, and, but I keep them super short. They're like one word, two word kind of things with a bullet. Sure, sure. And like um, one other thing I want to point out is um, I've been reading uh, several books and I know the only way to fight negative uh, emotions is with positive emotions. You okay. know, our, lim- our, our, our limbic system can't tell the difference whether it's imaginary, like actually felt, or an experience yes. from the past. Right, right, yes. And so you can use positive mental imagery to fight the negative imagery. And there's a lot of books that show that this is like visualization is really, really powerful, right? Mm-hmm. We have a very mm-hmm. powerful computer in our heads. Um, and so like I've written down like maybe five or six things that are, are that evoke a really strong positive emotional uh, emotion out of me. And I use those as positive ways to fight the depression. If I remember it, like, and so I will, if I go to my bed and that's my hiding place for when I have my depressive incidences, I'll post it right there. I'll post it where I can yeah. see it. I'll put it on the wall, you know, and like, it, it, you can't do it when you're feeling better. So when you're not, you can still see the truth in front of you. And it has like the basic directions to like, basically take care of yourself. Right. Not like yeah. you're still not doing, you know, you know, it's a little harder if you probably have other responsibilities. But maybe you have a partner. Maybe you have a support mm-hmm. network that you can call and, and ahead of time you've arranged uh, for some help. And I had a point where with, um, my partner at the time where, you know, I could text um, one word to her and and she would, like, get the idea of what was going on. Um, and I called it Carl because that's what I named my depression anxiety. Sure, um, sure. But I, I knew how to go for basic help. And then I know if it got really bad, what else I could do? Like the 988 um, crisis line, you have, um, you know, the tr- the trans lifeline, some other stuff. Sure. And knowing those ahead of time and having them readily available, if, if your depression gets bad, can save your life someday. Yeah. You know? Oh, sure. Um, and what's that worth? So um, in the moment, it be it's lot. worth total shit yeah. and nothing, right? Well, right. <laughs> it's the worst part. But, so, yeah. but I'm, I mean, I'm see- like you have a... You have a checklist. You have a, fl- I mean, a flow chart. You have all these it's, things it's printed out. One page, and it's sure. very like, it's really stupid, simple to follow. Like it's, for but mine, but mine's all personal. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, I think what would be great is if you're, you know, we we should, we should put, you know, the process or even just how do you make one of these sheets. Yeah, we can put that as a resource. I think that would be very valuable. Yeah. I think that would be great. So, and, and you know, so, I was go just going to say that also, that support network is also so important. Yes. And doing yes. the work to find some people that that love you and value you and accept you as as you really are, or right. regardless of how you are. Right. You know, right. they don't care about are you this thing or that thing. They care about who you are, right? And they love that. Yes. And it's hard to find that sometimes, but those people are out there. And they are. Yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> something you can't really. It's hard to generate a process for, you know, how do we find people who care about us? But um, I think on that, though, we, we've spoken a long time. I, I'm certainly I would like to call on you. And, and you know, if you if you're willing to to put together like, you know, the the process, I don't want you to share your personal document. But, you know, maybe we can make a, you know, put a the process of, of how to make one of these documents, what goes into it and, and, and where to put it. I mean, I think that'd be awesome if uh, if you were willing to help us all out like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I do, you know, we have been talking for a long time. I, I should probably cut it here. Um, Morgan, I will definitely say thank you so much for, you know, you've bared a lot of your soul here. Yeah. And, and I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody else, you know, who's who's watching this appreciates it. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm glad we could both talk about this. You know, it's oh, a really sure. important topic. Yeah. Not not a fun one, but, you know, cer- certainly necessary. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. all right. With, with uh, that, um, that is it for Gender Identity Weekly for the week of September 7th, 
2023. As I mentioned before, if you enjoyed this content, content dark as it might have been, please like the video, uh, like the audio, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the channel. You will receive new content as it is published. And of course, please, you know, if you really appreciate it, go to um, the website genderidentitytoday.com, linked in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe there. And what you can do with doing so is um, help me and Morgan uh, continue hmm. this fight for identity and gender, uh, just being normal aspects of the human experience. So thank you very much. And thank you, Morgan, again. Yeah, it was a pleasure.